we're doing some primitive projects today. I love creating timeless primitive home decor. It's easier than you think, and it's easy to change it out on your different times of the year, whether it's spring decor, summer, or in, in the winter decor. Really, all you have to do is change out, maybe in the spring, put some greenery, in the fall, put some pit berries, uh, in the winter time, Christmas time, do some cedar or pine branches. Those make a big difference in what you're going to use and how you're going to de decorate your primitive decor. I think that is one of the things that really feeds my passion for primitive decor is using, um, it's just timeless and using different uh, greeneries, pit berries, different things to dress it up, or you could use them alone and not dress it up. I want to share with you today a really cool easy trick with a stencil that I'm going to use and I think you're going to like it. Before we get started, I want to thank Debbie from Debbie's Mindless Happy Place. She has a channel here on YouTube and I'll put a link down in my description if you want to check out her channel. She recently did a video on sunflowers. I just love sunflowers. And it just got me feeling like I need to do some sunflower projects. So I want to thank Debbie for inspiring me and getting me going on these primitive sunflower projects. Let's go. So I'm going to be using my fusion paint in the color mustard and this piece of slate it's uh, a really it's an actual piece of slate this isn't chalkboard um, it's very cool so uh, and then this piece of plywood I'm going to be using as well it's cut out into a sign shape it is I didn't do this I actually got three of them the same we're just going to be using one today but um, um, I was excited to find them and I think I'm going to keep one as like a template maybe and I'll be able to cut out my own shapes um, when I when I decide I want to and that way I don't have to make my own it's they're already done so I just give this I'm starting with the back I want to get the back done and so I'm going to do two coats on the back and let that dry now I'm going to grab my lock and key IOD mold and I'm going to use that one right there. I'm going to make two of these, one for the top and one for the bottom of my sign to go above my piece of slate that I'm going to attach to this plywood. So I'm just adding some cornstarch to my mold and this helps uh, release the clay once you get ready to pop it right out of the mold. It, um, it works pretty well. On these so I just rolled up a little bit of my clay I've got to use up my clay it's getting dry and um, so I've got to use that up so I'm trying to find uh, think of some different ideas of how I can use this clay and I know you can add a paper towel to it or whatever a damp towel um, but it's just getting it's it's getting down to just pieces and stuff and I really need to just use it up so um, this is gonna this, these two projects are going to use up quite a bit of it, which is awesome. And then I can buy a fresh pack when I'm ready. But yeah, I'm just going to put this on here, this one on here like this. And I'm just going to use my slate as a, as a guide as to where I want to put it and make sure that I kind of get it uh, centered, straight, and in the middle. And then I'm going to just add some glue to the back and uh, apply that to my piece of wood. Now I'm not using any special glue here. This is Gorilla Wood Glue and it works really well. I've used these to affix my molds to other pieces of whatever I'm going to stick them on, whether it be glass or whatever. I use the wood glue and it works just fine. So um, for me anyway, but uh, that's that's what I'm using and I just make sure that I get the glue all the way to the edges so that it, they stick down really well and then I just lightly push down on them to make sure it's stuck. Now I use my heat gun a little bit to kind of put a little skin on that, um, on that clay because I'm not going to let it sit a long time before I paint over it and I want to make sure that when I do get ready to paint over it that it's nice and um, 
it's like got a skin on it. That's the only thing that I can say. It's like hardened a little bit, not all the way through. So you still have to be very careful. Now I have this sped up just a little bit. So it looks like I may be really rough with it, but I'm very gentle with um, my tapping and with my brushing on it so that I don't lose that detail and um, that I don't break off any pieces. I did, I did, I think one of the ends I broke off and I was able to just uh, add some paint to it and it, it covered it right up. You'd never know, but it's, it's very, uh, you have to be very careful doing it this way. Typically you'd let your, your clay dry overnight, but I have no patience and I wanted to get this done. I was so excited to work on this that I'm just like, I can't wait. It's just got to get done. <laughs> so, um, I, I just, did the two coats on the top just like I had done on the bottom. Now I'm taking a pretty heavy grit sandpaper and I'm sanding down to the wood um, in some spots around the edges so that I can, when I go back with my antique wax, which is what I'm doing here, I love putting the antique wax over the mustard paint. It gives it such an old vintage look that I absolutely love it and so I'm just going to do that all over the top of this but I like when I sand down to the wood when I do this because then it sticks to that wood underneath and it gives you some highlights and dark pieces when it sticks to the wood underneath so I'm doing that and I'm again being very careful wiping back I have this stencil of a sunflower that I think I got off from Amazon. If I can find it, I'll link it below for you. And I'm going to stick it to my piece of slate with some tape. And I want to make sure I get both top and bottom so it doesn't move around on me. And I'll be able to um, remove it pretty easily. So once I get that on there, I'm going to use a just a, an off-white color first. Now I'm using a sponge to put this on. I'm taking a little bit of paint and dabbing it off onto the plate so that I don't have so much paint on it. And then I'm going over my stencil. So I'm going to use two coats on this. Uh, I just do a light coat on each and that way you don't get too much and it doesn't get too juicy and go under the stencil. So in between each coat I just hit it with the heat gun just lightly for a few seconds. You don't want to stay on it too long and you don't want to get it too close because it will melt your stencil. So I really like how this came out and you could stop here if this was what you wanted to do. I'm going to do multi-layer so I'm just setting this. I'm taking the tape off and as you can see, I'm setting my stencil back down. It's, it's dry, so I can do this. And you want to make sure that the back of your stencil is dry so that you don't get paint smudged all over everything. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm moving my stencil one way. I'm turning it one way or another, depending on how I want it. It doesn't, I don't really think it matters which way you go. You just need to, it's going to give it like a shadow effect, what I'm going to do next. So you're going to kind of, going to kind of keep turning it. Just remember which way you turned it because you're going to want to turn it that same way uh, every time you add another layer. So now I'm going to go in with my mustard paint and I'm going to just, I cleaned off, as you can see, I kind of tamped off my uh, brush and I'm just going in with some light paint over this whole stencil again. Now I've turned it so some of that white is covered up and that's going to leave like a nice white highlight off to the side or a little shadow effect and um, I love doing this. I don't do it that often and I don't know why because I really like using it, using the stencils this way and doing this. So here you can see I turned it, added my mustard, and you can still see, because I turned my stencil, you can still see that uh, white or the ivory color off to the edges. So now I've laid my stencil back down. I have not moved it. 
I just did the middle. I wanted the my middle section black. And then I went over a little bit the edges with my with my black paint on my brush. It's just a just a dry brush. It's not very it wasn't very wet. Then I pull my tape up again and I turn my stencil another small small turn just so that I can go back and kind of get the some of the white or the ivory uh, with my black paint. So it's just a dry brush again. It looks really dark here, but it's really not that dark at all. And you can see that it gives it a really cool aged effect. Now I'm going to add my slate to my board and I'm just going to use a couple screws. I don't think it's hooked there and also a hanger on the back of it. And then I just take again a dry brush and I go over my details on my clay pieces and I also went a little darker around the edges. So I think this came out really good and I love using this technique on the stencil. I hope you like it. I hope I explained it well enough so that you understand um, what I actually did by lifting the stencil and turning it just a little bit and it adds such a cool effect. Okay, we're going to keep with the sunflower theme here and we're going to redo this this cute little box. I really love doing these boxes over. I don't know where this came from. I have no idea. It just showed up. And I I can't remember where honestly, I can't remember where I got it. It could have been at the free shack. Uh it doesn't really matter where I got it. I have it and I'm going to paint it. So hopefully somebody isn't missing it and they're never going to recognize it after I'm done with it. So it's going to be amazing. So I'm just taking my mustard paint. We're going to go with mustard today. I love doing primitive decor with uh, my mustard paint and antique wax. It's like my go-to. If anybody says, you know, do something primitive, it's going to be that or black. I mean, that's just what it is. But I'm going to take my sunflower mold. I think that's what it's called. It's all sunflower, so it must be sunflower mold. But this is from IOD. Um, going to use my clay and I'm going to do a half of this giant sunflower that's on this mold. So I only I only want half of it. I want the bottom to be kind of straight. So I take a minute and I work on that and make it so that it's a little bit uh, straight across the bottom. And then I just take my wood glue, my my Gorilla wood glue again and put it on the back and make sure I get all the little petals that are there and just push up on that so that when I lay my box down it um, lays flat and I also push down on my petals a little bit so that when I put my lid on it um, doesn't push down on those petals they're already laying down so it doesn't like hinder that box top from being put on and taken off. So I just make sure everything's on there really good, push down on all my petals gently, and then I'm going to hit it, you know, oh, I'm checking it to make sure, and then I'm going to hit it with my heat gun a little bit, which I don't know if I show you here, but I just hit it just a, just a little bit, kind of get a little skin on there so that when I paint it, it won't... Um, you know, take back that detail or anything like that, push it down or anything. So I'm just very gentle as I'm painting this. Again, it's just, you just, um, I have no patience, but I also know that I need to have a little bit and be gentle with it. So this is sped up, so it looks like I'm kind of like pounding on it, but I'm really not. Uh, and I want to make sure I get that paint all down in those. These are so detailed, these, um, these molds, it's crazy. So you wanna make sure you get down in those little details. So then I make a, I decided I wanted one for the top of my box as well. So I made a whole sunflower for that one. And I, I wanna say this is my favorite mold ever, is this sunflower mold, because I just love sunflowers. I love flowers in general, but I think these are just so detailed and beautiful. 
And once I do this part, after I did two coats of the mustard paint on my sunflowers and I got those all nice and dry, I'm going to take my antique wax and I'm going to get down, just get that brush down in all those details. And then when I wipe it back, you're going to see it just looks so great. I absolutely love it. I just love it. Now I let that sit and dry just for a little while so that I could go to the next step and which is take my block my brush with the black paint on it and I'm just going to go along the edges and kind of highlight those edges a little bit give it a little uh, black distress and then I'm also going to take it a, just a dry brush and go over my sunflower and then just around the edges and give it like a little highlight um I don't know I think this looks really cool it just gives it another vintage aged look I think just like it's been around and here's the finished product I hope you enjoyed my primitive projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it was. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And check out this next video that's on your screen. I know that you're going to love it.